So in this video, we're going to cover at-home maintenance on your basic front-loading sewing machine. First thing I'm going to do is remove the needle, set it aside. I'm not going to throw it away quite yet because we'll use it to actually clean part of the machine. In order to remove the needle plate on this machine, I do need to rotate the hand wheel so the feed dog drops and then push slightly towards the back while lifting the front. And then we'll set this needle plate aside and address the dings and dents later on. Before moving on, I wanted to show you how I'm recording these videos. So to address the inevitable comments regarding lighting, I'm doing everything I can at this point in time. And if you bear with me, I hope that they only get better. So moving on, I'm going to release the race cover by pushing left on this single spring to remove the hook. Your machine may have two counter rotating tabs. You'll just move them both to the outside and pull the race cover off. Now that I have the hook out, I'm going to grab our used needle. I'm going to run it down this groove, which will loosen up any thread or fuzz that may have accumulated over time. I'm now going to remove the presser foot, which will give me better access to the feed dogs. I'm going to try to take a toothbrush and loosen up any debris that's built up in the feed dogs themselves and try to get under the feed dogs as much as possible. If there's too much lint built up in here, your feed dogs won't travel the full distance in which they're supposed to. I'm going to gently scrape the top of the feed dogs where lint may have been compacted between the feed dogs and the needle plate. I'm going to remove the rear cover of the free arm on this machine to address a few things in particular with this model later in the video. For this video, we're going to use a mini attachment kit to clean the machine out using a vacuum cleaner. You can find these at any sewing shops or vacuum stores, and if you can't, I will leave an Amazon link below. For the record, we do use compressed air in order to clean vacuums and sewing machines at our repair shop. For whatever reason, the internet has really made this out to be some sort of faux pas. But regardless, we're just trying to get the lint out of the sewing machine by whatever means necessary. We would recommend just a single drop of oil on any moving component, being sure that we're using soy machine oil rather than something like a 3-in-1 oil, which could be wax-based. On many of these older Berninas, there's a particular slide that helps with feeding the material. If it's too dry, the material won't feed properly, so I'm trying to show where in particular to oil. So now I'm going to check the condition of the stepper motors for the feed dogs and the needle bar. They'll initialize every time you turn the machine on. One last time, just watch as this initializes as it turns on. If you have a machine like this and this doesn't happen, there's a problem.
We'll next be looking at our hook, just making sure that the hook tip is nice and smooth, checking for any burrs on the ends or the outside edge. I'm trying to get the camera to focus, so I do apologize if the picture seems a little distorted. So I'm running my fingernail down the tip of the hook, checking for any slight imperfections. It would almost feel like a small barb, and we're going to address this by buffing it off. If they're more significant burrs, we'll use emery cloth like this to knock them down, followed by a polishing wheel. We get these discs online and we hook them up to a Dremel tool. And if you don't have either one on hand, you could always use a nail file. You do want to just be sure that you're not over buffing, which is possible, where you're basically reshaping the hook. If you do that, you may have to replace the hook in the future. After checking the hook tip, I'm just going to put a single drop of oil on the back side of the hook. I'm then going to smooth it out and then put the residual oil on the shaft. So to reinstall the hook, we're going to be sure to almost line up these two crescent shaped pieces, one being the hook and one being the drive. You set them in and just run your finger on the outside where the hook sets into the race just to make sure it's smooth. At this point I'll flip up the door and then give it a turn by hand just to make sure it's not going to pop itself back out. So now that that's done, we're going to address the needle plate. We're going to look at the top and bottom side. At times we've seen these needle plates almost completely chewed to the point of needing replacement because the needles struck them so many times. In a case like this where there's just small needle dings, we're going to go at it with some emery cloth. So we're going to load this bobbin. In this case, it's supposed to spin clockwise. So we're going to get under the tension spring and ensure that it has plenty of tension. This is not a foolproof method in checking bobbin tension, but if you can hold your bobbin upright without it falling, you are in the tension mechanism. It's important to keep in mind that your needles are directional. In most modern sewing machines, the flat side of the needle goes away from you when threading. If your needle is in it incorrectly, the machine will not sew properly. When you reinstall your needle, be sure to push it as far up as possible in the needle bar and tighten down the needle set screw just finger tight. It's always a good idea to make sure that the bottom of your press and puts nice and smooth as well.
So for our test strip, I'm just going to take a two layers of material and start with a straight stitch. This is going to give us a good baseline. If there's loops on the bottom, it's an often indication that our top threading is either incorrect or our tension is set too low. All I'm doing here is just making sure that our stitches are pretty consistent. Now I'm going to test with a zigzag, which is going to show me whether or not the needle bar is moving in its correct path, and then if there was any tension issues, they'd really stick out at this point. And lastly, I'm going to test with a forward and reverse stitch. This is going to show us that A, our reverse mechanism is working properly, and B, that our stitches are balanced. For the balance, we're making sure that these little squares that you see, or diamonds, are coming together with a crisp point. If they weren't, we would make further adjustments. And that's it. Thanks for watching.